So we saw that we can use a return statement to export or return a value so that we can capture it later in a variable or do something with it. But there's another thing you should know about return statements, which is that they end function execution. So if you have a return statement in the middle of your function, the code afterwards is not going to execute. For example, if we have our function square, which takes a number and we want it to return x times x, if that's the parameter, if I add some code afterwards, like console.log, all done, and I try calling this function, square of four, I get 16, but this console.log never runs. It's after this return statement. Whenever JavaScript encounters a return, it just moves on. It's done with this function entirely. We could have 100 lines after this. They would not run. But of course, if we were using conditionals, if we had an if statement around a return, then it may not run every single time. So it's not a matter of if there is a return statement written anywhere in the function, nothing afterwards runs. It's only if the return statement is executed, if this code is run, which in our case, it always is. But we could write something else like a very stupid function called isPurple. isPurple takes a color as a parameter and we'll assume it's a string. And if color is triple equal to the string purple, we will return true. I name this is purple, which is a standard convention, is something for a Boolean method, which returns true or false. So we have true or false, we're returning true if color is triple equal to purple. If it's not equal to purple, we could return false. So we have two return statements, but only one of them is going to run. If color is purple, this will run. And let's actually make it a little more case insensitive. So why don't we two lowercase color. So if someone passes in purple in all caps, we'll compare it first by lowercasing it to all lowercase and then comparing it to purple. All right, so is purple of blue is false. Is purple of purple is true. Oops, all caps, we still get true. So this is not the best way of writing this function. And we'll talk about how we could refactor it in a moment. Ignoring the fact that it's not even a useful function at all, not even remotely useful. We do have two return statements. Only one of them is going to run. But as soon as one of them does run, the rest of the code stops. So in this if, if I had a console.log, yay, that's never going to run, ever. There's no scenario where this runs because either this is true and we're returning, which stops the execution of the function completely, or it's false. And so this entire chunk is skipped and we move right to here. If I try is purple with purple, we don't get it. Okay, so I mentioned there are other ways of writing this, for a, especially for a simple if else, a simple yes or no. We can rewrite this function a couple different ways. I'm gonna copy this. The first improvement we could make is to remove the else entirely. Because of the way return statements work, what we just talked about, where they end function execution, the only way to get to this line is if this is false. Because we're returning true in here, execution stops. So if color is purple, we're done. Function over. If it's not, this is the only way we would ever return false. So it's just a, a shorter way of writing this. You'll see people write functions like this that take advantage of the fact that a return statement stops a function. Okay, so this is one way of doing it. We can just run the code again, make sure it still works. Is purple of purple is true. Is purple of anything else is false. We don't have an else. Now there's actually an even shorter way of writing this where we could basically do it on one line. If we're just returning a Boolean true or false, we can simply return this right here. Return color dot two lowercase triple equals purple. This right here is a Boolean expression. Triple equals will give us true or false. So if I have, let's say color is pink, I would call pink dot two lowercase triple equals purple, that's false. But if color is purple, even if it's capitalized oddly, it still gives us true. So we're going to return this value. 
and that will be true or false. This evaluates first, then it's returned. So it's just another way of writing it. We only need one return. Now this only works for a yes or no simple situation like we have here. What if we wanted to check if color is purple? We want to return true. And if color is lilac, we want to return true. Anything else is false. We would need to rewrite this. It would be harder to do in a single line. And let's do one more example. I want to show how a return will stop a function no matter where it's located in that function. So it could be inside of a loop, inside of a conditional. It doesn't matter. So we'll do a slightly more advanced version of is purple. Let's go with contains purple. And this will accept an array. And we will loop over the array. And if any element in that array is either purple or magenta, we'll return true. Otherwise, we return false. So we'll loop over the array for let color of array. We'll use a for of. If color is triple equal purple or color is triple equal, I said magenta, I think. Is magenta purple or is it pink? For our purposes, we're considering it purple. If that's the case, we'll return true. And then where would we return false? This one's a bit different. If we put return false here, or else return false, then as soon as we encounter something that's not purple, let's say our array looks like this, blue, pink, magenta. The first time through the loop, color will be blue. So this is not true. And we don't want to return false right away. That stops the function entirely. We're only checking the first element. The only time we know that the entire array does not contain purple is if the loop is finished. So if the loop is done and we haven't returned true, that means we never found purple or magenta as an element, then we can return false. So we just move it down there. So let's test it out. Contains purple. I'll paste that array in. I do need to make sure I get rid of the semicolon. Add my paren, and we get true. If we change this to no longer be magenta, we get false. So this is showing us two things. First of all, when we return true, it doesn't matter that we're inside of a conditional, inside of a loop, inside of a function. The function is done, at least this single execution of it. When we called it with this array, it's done, it returns true. So it's not like uh, a return is only going to break out of one code block. It has the power to halt the entire function, even though it's in a conditional in a loop. So this loop might run one time if the first element is purple or magenta, or it might run 100 times if our elements or if our array is 100 items long with no instance of purple or magenta. And the second thing we saw, once again, is returning false or returning some value as a last ditch, as basically the last option, the last line in this function. So if none of this returned true at any point, that means we've gone through the entire loop, then just return false. We don't have to add additional logic. We don't need an else. We just know if you haven't returned by now, this is what we want to return. So if this is true, the function's done and this never runs. If we never return true, then this runs. Okay, so we've seen the basics of functions at this point. We define a function, at least one version. All we've seen is the function syntax, function statement, or function declaration. We have function, some function name, potentially different parameters we would add in, A and B, and then some return value. And you don't have to return a value from every single function, but a lot of the time you want to. Um, and we'll see a bunch of examples coming up because it's time to get some practice.